Hi and welcome back. In this video we're talking about inheritance. And if this scares you because it looks a bit advanced, don't worry. Inheritance is pretty easy to grasp, at least on some level, when we're going to be talking about more advanced stuff as we move on through the course. Imagine you've got this student class, something very similar to what we've defined before. It's got an init method that takes in a name and a school and assigns them to two properties, and it also creates a marks property, which is an empty list. Then it also has an average function method. I always want to call them functions. An average method that returns the average of self.marks. Now, imagine you want to sort of add some more functionality to another class, which may be a working student class. A working student is exactly the same as a student, but it has a salary as well. Let's do that. Here's our working student class, and it has an init method too whereas it takes a name, a school, and a salary. Now, same as above, we're going to have self.name equals name, self.school equals school, self.marks equals empty list, and now a new line, self.salary equals salary. Whenever you are writing stuff like this, that is exact copy of something you had above, you must know that something is wrong. Something can be made better, particularly in Python, where duplication is um, is not really that that common. And there are always ways to make your code. There are always ways to make your code less duplicate. We also have to define, of course, this average method, where it's going to return everything as we know it, like so. Now, if we create a working student. Um, student, Rolf, that goes to MIT and has a salary of 15.50, we can of course print out Rolf.salary and that's going to give us the salary property, 15.5. Notice how Python drops the last zero because it's a zero and that's fine. So again, nothing new is going on here. Working student has created a new blank object. Let's put it into self. Rolf, MIT and 15.50 have gone into name, school and salary respectively. Then we've created th four properties, self.name, self.school, self.marks, and self.salary, and we've given it some values, name, school, and salary, which is, these are the, the parameters, an empty list for marks to be initialized with. If we wanted to add some marks, we would have to do rolf.marks.append56, for example. And then we could calculate the average of those marks. So you can see there's a lot of duplication between our student which has name, school, and marks, and an average function, and our working student, which is exactly the same, but the only thing we've added is this salary. So we could use inheritance in order to remove duplication. Here's how it's going to go. I'm going to re-implement the working student class using inheritance to reduce duplication, and then we're going to talk about what's going on. So. We've got a class working student, and we want to make it extend the student class. What that's going to mean is the working student class is going to become an exact copy of student, but we're going to be able to modify particular methods if we want. The way you do that is you add some brackets at the end, and you type in student. Now, working student is a class that is a child of student. It extends student. So, we can delete the average method, completely gone, but working student still has an average method. Only it's not there, it is now directly inherited from student. Exactly the same, imagine it's a copy and paste, nothing's changed. So what about the init method then? We've got name and school which are just copies of them, can we just delete them? And just, just keep the salary? This would be great. I'll, I'll be honest. It would be great if we could do this, but sadly, no. Because when working student is now called, the same thing happens as before. An empty blank object is created, given to self, and now salary is Rolf. MIT and 15.50 don't have any matching arguments, so we get an error. Too many positional arguments for constructor call. So no, you cannot do that, unfortunately. But what you can do 
is now that you have this empty object here, you can call the students init method and make it go through this initialization of self.name, self.school, and self.marks. And the way you do that is a mildly confusing way. You say super. Super is the parent class, in this case, student. And you can then, this is the only time when you are going to call the init method manually. You're going to say super, which is the, the parent class student, dot, dunder init, open and close brackets, and in here you're going to put the name and the school. So what is happening then is you are just jumping over to this init method, and self is still the current object that you're dealing with. That's Rolf, this working student. So now, here you call the parents class in its method that initializes name, school, and marks. Then you come back down here and you initialize salary. And this is a much more concise way of writing your working student class that is just an extension of the student class. It just adds a new property to it. Notice how you can print Rolf's salary, but you can also do Rolf.marks, marks.append, 57, Rolf.marks.append, 99, and you can print the average there. Then you can run it, and 78.0 comes out. That's totally good, because that means that our working student has this salary, this average function, or sorry, method defined in here, and, uh, and, and that's all good. It's just inherited it from the student class as opposed to having to define it. That's the basis of inheritance. And the, the way to extend the class is not, now you can define something else like uh, weekly salary. And this is going to return self.salary times 37.5. That's the normal working hours in the UK, 37.5 hours. So now you can print salary, And that's going to give you the Rolf salary times 37.5. Important. If you create... I'm going to add a few lines there so it's a bit easier to read. If you create Anna being a normal student at Oxford... Notice how she doesn't take a salary, because the student constructor is still up here. This class is still totally valid. It doesn't stop being useful. Doesn't take a salary. Doesn't have a salary property. So now if you do Anna.weekly salary, this is going to give you an error. And it's going to say the student object has no attribute weekly salary. This function here is not defined for student. It's only defined in working student. This goes from top to bottom. Working student gets stuff from student, but not the other way around. Student does not get anything from working student. Okay, important thing to remember. That's it for this video. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at the property uh, decorator. We're not going to talk about what decorators are, but what we're going to talk about is the fact that we've got this weekly salary thing here, and it's a function that takes no arguments other than self, so there's some simplification we can do uh, here. Let's talk about it in the very next video.